Hello and welcome to Powerdrift. This is Simplified where we take complicated ideas and we break them down into easily digestible little bits. Today we are talking about tire pressures. It's a very common question and it's a very very important question as well. And before we get into that, if you haven't, there's a button that you need to be hitting. It's called subscribe. And next to that is a little ghanti. Please ring it because when we have fresh content, you will get notified directly and you don't want to miss out. India's best automotive content, I'm very proud to say, is right here on Powerdrift. So tire pressures, it's a very very common question that we get and it's a very very crucial part of your vehicle because tires like I like to say are your only contact patch, it's the only way you're touching the ground, it's the only way you're transferring your inputs whether it's braking, acceleration or direction changes to the road and then get the vehicle to respond. So maintaining those tires and being able to enjoy that grip predictably and for a long time requires you to do just one thing which is to maintain your tire pressures and the process is actually quite simple you need to establish a pattern where every two days if you're a very very heavy user of your vehicle or every seven days if you're a very light user you need to go back to the petrol pump or puncture wala whatever you use and top up your tire pressures if you're going to take this seriously i highly recommend you get yourself your own tire pressure gauge and i know that when i heard this advice on the internet i was like what is he talking about man they've all got gauges but you know that their gauges don't work quite that well and i can also tell you that pressure gauges are no longer either that expensive or that hard to get the one i recommend is from big bad bikes it's made by a company called cruise tools it's a digital tire pressure gauge it's about that size and it's only about 1500 bucks and i've had that for almost two years now and it's worked flawlessly so there's honestly no reason why you shouldn't get it if you're going to take your vehicle seriously then comes the question of under what conditions should you be running lower tire pressures than what the manufacturer recommends and honestly there's almost no situation where lower tire pressures help okay if you're riding in very loose surfaces like sand and the motorcycle sinking into the sand lowering tire pressures can help trials riders who do uh, essentially jumping over rocks and stuff routinely run extremely low tire pressures because they want a lot of grip but remember their motorcycles are on only for about 10 12 minutes at a time and after that there is an opportunity to look at what damage there is and fix it that's not the case with your street motorcycle so unless you are remarkably light okay and i say that only because most manufacturers calibrate the weight of the average rider to something like 65 to 75 kilos if you're a lot lot lighter like a moto gp rider 45 kilos or something there might be a small advantage to be gained by running a little bit lower tire pressure than usual on the flip side if you're a much heavier rider 110 120 kilos you might be able to gain a small advantage by running a slightly higher tire pressure than stock as well but do you change your tire pressures for the winter for the summer for the rain absolutely not all of this is already calibrated by the manufacturer and that's why they have a recommended tire pressure on some of the bigger bikes in fact you might have two sets of tire pressures where they tell you that you run this pressure on the front this pressure on the rear when you're alone and a different set of pressures higher pressures when you're alone with a pillion or you're riding with a lot of luggage okay those are the only conditions where i would try to mess with the tire pressure because there's honestly no other reason to do it now the thing about tire pressures is that maintaining the right tire pressure gives you a lot of benefit including grip that you can rely on so if i were to give you a tire whose grip changes constantly from very good to even middling that's not a bad tire but the fact that you can't predict how much grip the tire has will make your life miserable in the same way the tire pressure creates a reliable structure of the tire which means when i go into a corner and i change the loading on that tire how it will squish and deform is something that is predictable if you take your tire pressures too low the deformation can become unpredictable which will feel like a nervous motorcycle and you won't have confidence to ride it on the other side if i raise the tire pressures too much the tire will not deform and it will feel like the grip is going away and yes there are hypermiling websites that say if you raise your tire pressures quite a bit you can get quite a lot of economy out of it what they don't tell you is that people who are riding high miles like that don't really enjoy a lot of grip around corners and they're actually quite happy to slow down for corners when they do that and to me that's okay perhaps in a car if you're trying to get extraordinary mileage out of it but it is definitely definitely the wrong thing to do on a motorcycle so in sum check your tire pressures regularly it's the most important thing you'll do if you take it seriously get your own tire pressure gauge run the stock tire pressure that the manufacturer recommends for most of what you do you won't need to change it think of low tire pressures only and only if you're riding a very loose surface or you have a much lighter weight and remember if you lower tire pressure on a loose surface when you get back on the road you won't have to raise tire pressures again otherwise you'll just get punctures higher tire pressures than stock are almost never a good idea you can use them to get some amount of mileage out but the key thing and this is the thing that is important is that when we say lower tire pressures than stock or higher pressures than stock we are talking about 2 psi 3 psi differences it's not 10 psi or even 5 psi even at the race track where we know that the tires are going to run at the high end of their performance envelope the tires are going to run hotter than normal it's not like we're reducing tire pressures by 10 12 psi that only happens to the absolute fastest racers most of us who go a little bit quick at the race track will only reduce tire pressures by 2 or 3 psi and that's only because the tire will run hotter and hot air expands and the tire will come back to what is closer to the stock recommended pressure and that's the only reason to do it 
I hope this clarifies things for you. If you've still got more questions, all you have to do is leave us a comment. And if there are other topics you'd like to see discussed here on Simplified, that's what the comment boxes are for. Thank you so much for watching. Please do subscribe. And if you think this is useful, please do share it with your friends. I know there's a lot of misinformation about tire pressures and I hope that this will help clear it up. Thank you so much for watching. This is Simplified.